So we had the Computex 2011 here in the, with MHL and what's the latest news? So the latest news is you start to see MHL products, MHL uh, products that have MHL technology in the marketplace today. So what I'm holding here is the Samsung Galaxy S2 phone, which was the first phone announced with MHL technology inside. So you can see that right here there's a single uh, micro USB port which now is dual purpose. It can either support USB or when you plug an MHL cable in, it will detect that it's MHL and output MHL or TV out to an HDTV like you're seeing here. This is also a Galaxy S2 that's connected via an MHL cable and outputting MHL signaling so there's no USB, there's no U HDMI happening here. It's all MHL signaling over this existing connector to the connection on the back of the TV. So which is the, the, these devices on the market? And so so what here? you see, the first three uh, devices are on the market today. The Samsung Galaxy S2, the HTC Flyer tablet, and the Samsung Infuse phone are all available for purchase today. It's my understanding that the HTC Evo 3D phone, the HTC Evo V 4G tablet, as well as the HTC Sensation phone will be available very shortly. So it's really like out there, it's not just one product, no. but it's several. Yes, it's several products, multiple carriers, um, multiple vendors, we're very excited. So right now you're using Android, uh, somehow it's upscaling or it's, it can output 1080p at the same time have a, like a lower resolution down here. Absolutely, so what you're seeing here is the phone is 800 by 480 but the TV of course is 1920 by 1080 so this is just a simple upscale of the UI on the phone mirroring uh, the TV mirroring what's on the phone. But when you go to another app, and this is completely application dependent, if I were to pick, uh, say, a application, you know, like a, tr you know, this is playing back a trailer, it actually changes to 1080 mode. So this trailer you're actually seeing, this movie trailer, is in 1080 by 1920, 1920 by 1080, full re H 1080. P resolution, is that resolution. something that you do at the MHL or Google does it? Or who does who does that kind of coding to uh, anybody in the open source market can do this, right? That's right. That this is um, uh, one of the fundamental things that you control with with the Android SDK. That you basically can choose what the UI is at the phone, which is 800 by 480, and what the UI is at the TV, which is 1920 by 1080. So one of the more compelling things that I see I hear people developing is you're going to have a uh, when you connect up your phone via MHL, you'll have a separate interface um, that will be a subset of what's on the phone. So you, you could have essentially Facebook, email, text messaging, and gaming, say you know, Angry Birds or something, all simultaneously on the screen. So now you have essentially uh, a very interesting experience because you can now simultaneously keep up with your Facebook, go play your game, go check on email, check on text messaging. You have that all, you know, in the end you carry your life on your hip anyway. So it's nice that when I get home I plug it in. And then coexistence is cool because you know, I found this Bluetooth keyboard which works fine with the phone. So I basically I can sit on my couch with my Bluetooth keyboard, surf the web. Uh, this is actually an Android, made for Android, so you can see the, the back button, the home key, the uh, sleep button, make, I can make a phone call. So This is I, cheap, no? This, is, uh, this was, I think, less than $50 US. Yeah. But uh, I found it in, in uh, the electronics district of Taiwan. And I think it's funny that I like all the top row is all the uh, emoticons. <laughs> That's funny. So I was very amused by that. And it actually sends them over, the emoticons. Yeah. Uh, so. so, for example, over here as well, you're demonstrating on this. Uh... So this is uh, an HTC Flyer tablet. So this is... Uh, Again, an MHL connection out um, that goes to the MHL signaling to the TV. TV is charging this tablet, although tablets have bigger batteries, so the charging is not as important. Um, but what you are seeing is uh, uh, 1080 uh, coming out of the tablet, and then this is what a an MHL cable looks like. Okay. And it's totally available in the market because some people have said that they bought, for example, the S2 phone yes. and some parts of MHL is not yet totally available everywhere. So um, that is an accurate statement. Uh, the TVs are not available today, uh, but they will be shortly. I'm not actually privy to the individual launch plans of all my uh, consortium members, but they tell me early summer you'll start to see TVs available. What is nice is the Samsung Infuse phone, which is uh, from AT&T, bundles a uh, HDMI adapter. I don't know if it's in the phone, with the phone, but uh, it's actually, it'll, it'll look like this. This isn't the actual adapter, yeah. but basically, it basically takes MHL uh, out from the phone. You can then uh, provide power 
so that the MHL experience is always charging while you use it, and then that's standard HDMI out to the TV, so this will work with any HDMI TV today. So that's uh, what uh, uh, these guys are doing, is basically um, uh, bundling a HDMI, MHL to HDMI adapter with every phone, so you can use it with your TV today. Is that adapter available for the Samsung S2 yet? So uh, I am not aware of whether it's available or not. But it's separate. Uh, but but it, it will be separate. It's not bundled yeah. with the S2, but it is bundled with the Samsung Infuse. And could, could you say something about, uh, so what is the latest uh, like developments in terms of USB host or Ethernet? What could happen? You, you said something about channeling. What, what, what is that so, about? So it's not really development. It's more of a, um, I don't know if you'd call it an academic exercise or, or it's something you can do. Uh, whenever you have protocols, in general, you can always tunnel if it's fast enough, one protocol in another protocol. So it is theoretically possible to tunnel USB over MHL just like it's possible to tunnel MHL over USB. You just have to have a fast enough interface uh, to be able to support the encapsulation of the protocol. So uh, I could see uh, that happening. If you wanted to do simultaneous uh, protocols, you would have to tunnel one over the other. All right, because you were showing something on your, on your slide. Could we go back to your slide, something about uh, that's uh, basically, it's either one or the other. Yes. So when you connect, um, so what I explained here is that um, it's very important to know because the market office confuses it that there is no USB signaling in MHL. There is no HDMI signaling in MHL. It is MHL signaling only. And what happens is is that the cable, when you plug in an MH cable to the phone, will switch from USB mode to MHL mode. So there is, you know, people always confuse it because it looks like it's USB because it uses a USB connector. But this is something that I'm trying to not make it not confusing is that when you when you use MHL, it is MHL signaling only. And so that means that if, you know, you're connecting the TV out to the TV, so you can't, you know, sync your phone, say, at the same time. You know, so that's why if you wanted to tunnel it, you know, basically have a protocol within a protocol, theoretically you could do that. Theoretically, but uh, that's nothing like uh, officially planned yet. It, it's not something that uh, is officially planned, but it's not something that is restrictive either. It's, it's basically any time you have two protocols and one, you know, uh, and they're about the same speed, you can actually encapsulate one and the other. So it, it's basically something that engineers, hackers, someone in very savvy in software can, can make happen. And where do you hack that? Just in software and firmware or do you actually need to hack the whole uh, switch, uh, hardware switch? Kind no, of? you actually do it mostly in software. Mostly, mostly in software. Mostly in software where basically you're just, uh, in cap it's called encapsulation where you basically uh, put a wrapper, essentially a software wrapper around a protocol and send it inside of your existing protocol. How about the, uh, is there any reason for putting a cross on USB because there's a USB consortium uh, that might be some confusion in the market or something like that? Uh, and that's exactly why I put the cross there because yeah. it's important for people to realize we are not USB, we don't do any USB signaling. We happen to be using the USB connector, but just like uh, a headphone, an analog headphone can use a USB connector today, which doesn't do USB either, you're able to use the USB connection for other things. So that's why I put the cross there because I want to make sure people understand there is no USB signaling going on. And, you know, you know, in fact, I would like, you know, that's the disclaimer is that it isn't yeah. USB. It is all MHL signaling. There are five wires coming out of here. The power and ground for charging are just like USB, so that in that way it's similar. But the three other signals, there's two signals for um, audio and video, the, the 1080p that you're seeing here, and there's one for our control bus because... What we have is I can basically, from my remote control, so let's go back to looking at videos. So if you notice, this TV remote control, I can then basically, I'm doing this at the TV. The TV is actually capturing the IR remote control and then sending it down the wire to whatever is connected via MHL. So I'm able to essentially use my existing TV remote control to, if I want to switch what video I'm watching, if I want to switch what audio, what picture, I can sit at my, again, on my couch, you know, and, you know, we had talked about the Bluetooth keyboard. Well, I can just pick up the TV remote and use it. So where this gets more exciting is, you know, things like camcorders. If I had an MHL camcorder, while I'm watching the footage, I'm charging the device, and then I don't, and instead of the little custom remote controls, I can use my TV remote control to control my camcorder. You know, I can say personally, I've owned three camcorders in my life. I have lost every one of those small little remote controls. 
but with MHL, if it was an MHL camcorder, I don't worry about that anymore. I basically use the TV's remote control, and I can play fast forward rewind, choose what clip I want to watch, and the other thing that's nice is when I'm done, then the camcorder is ready to use again because it's fully charged. So it makes things simpler for the consumer. Is there anything official about the, the price difference between having two connectors and just one that does everything? Um, I don't think there's anything official. I, you know, we're the consortium, we're the standard kind of driving, you know, MHL, so we don't get involved in pricing. But, you know, to me, it's very simple math. Two connectors versus one. It's got to be cheaper to essentially do power video out in a single connector, especially over five pins and a nice thin cable than it is to do it via multiple connectors. The CE companies really like that idea to simplify things. They like the idea because it, it like you said, it simplifies things. I now have, a, you know, this is, actually if I take the housing off, you can actually, you can see it here. This is a thin phone. You know, it's a very thin phone. You've got your headphone jack and you've got your, you know, USB and MHL uh, output. So that's all, that's all the ports on the phone. Nothing more. So, you know, you imagine, you know, I've actually seen a design where they put both at the top and then they came down to almost what I think is too thin because it felt too delicate to me. But, you know, a very thin design uh, because, again, you don't, you don't need that. All you need is essentially those two connectors. Cool. All right. Thanks a lot. Okay. You're very